Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Z, what happened to Z, how responsible is Z, and other information regarding what we know about Z. So the first interaction we had with this individual was actually a phone call. He was a student of Anthony and he had signed up for the one-on-one -on -one personal tutoring. As you can see, there are a lot of students and Z is in the middle. So he wasn't the prodigy that the young Ethan was, but he was a very important part of Timepiece Gentleman moving forward after Jimmy left. So Jimmy was the right-hand man. He was supposed to make things go. He immediately knew something was wrong, and there is that really iconic conversation with him and Liz and Jimmy is sipping his orange juice, making faces, and obviously no longer wants to be part of the LA team. Immediately after they talk about family and love and good vibes, uh, he was out there. He was out of there. So, of course, Anthony had to find another Asian to replace him, Jimmy, and he found Z. Why not? I mean, he's his student. He lives in Los Angeles. He's got a family and a young, I believe, daughter. Uh, he's probably looking to make money from the watch business. I mean, he paid me. If you were Anthony, he paid Anthony $35,000 to $50,000, which was the upfront yearly cost to be one of Anthony's students. Give Anthony credit for where credit is deserved. He certainly actually uh, did take advantage of his students. Pun intended. Um, Z was the head of business operations. He was the Excel spreadsheet dude. He was... The guy who knew what the watches were worth, what they could sell for. Um, in many aspects, he didn't fit in with this group. This was a very, very strange group. Um, it was not a group that you would think somebody with Z. I don't know if, what type of education Z has, but it looks like he was relatively well off, well educated, and probably somebody who didn't really need to be part of um, this situation. To be quite frank with you, he didn't fit in. He absolutely did not fit in. And it doesn't make um, too much sense, right? Why he would be sitting next to Trevor, criminal. His boss, Anthony, is a criminal. Um, and things are just... I mean, there's a lot of criminals sitting around the table. And you're Z. You just want to be a normal dude, sell watches, get to wear high-end consignment pieces, and just have a, a good time, honestly. Just have a really, really good time. And then you find out, oh, man, I'm in the middle of this storm. And the one proof I have for you is the last video of them together as friends, right? There were four people in a car. Darby was in a car. So in my mind, Z must have left before Darby. Right, because Darby's still on video. Now the question is, when was the video made? Um, when was the video shot? And when was it uploaded, edited, and so on? We don't know that, but it it was the last video. There was Trevor, and there was Luis. We know from the timeline, Luis is the last to leave. We know Trevor had a situation in Florida to deal with, so he left. And Darby, Darby will tell you that he left early, but we don't actually know when he left. We just know that he left when the money ran out. We don't know when he figured that out, what happened, um, anything like that. We just know he left when there was no more money, and that is how Darby and Liz roll, right? Uh, on top of all this stuff, and I think uh, more, more importantly is, you know, in terms of the storytelling for Z, is he probably he split a Ferrari with Anthony. So at one point in time, he thought things were doing really well. He thought things were going in the right direction. He thought things were, you know, pretty much, uh, hey man, I trust this guy and let's split a Ferrari. You wouldn't split a Ferrari with somebody if you would worry about their payments. You wouldn't split split a Ferrari or somebody if you were worried about them going bankrupt, right? Um, in my personal opinion, right? So we have a situation where um, 
I think overall, Z was just kind of a regular guy, like a Jimmy, and he was put in a uh, no-win situation, and and he just tried to get out of it. I mean, they promised him all this. Maybe he's a younger guy. He seems like he's a younger guy, which is basically Anthony's target, you know, young people. Um, and he got he, he got into a mess, and he couldn't get out of the mess. And when by the time he tried, to, and there are concerns that maybe he is the mole, or I mean, um, he may be the mole. And as the mole, you know, like what are you? What information are you really going to give? Right? Like, you know, the Excel spreadsheet. You're going to download, you're going to work inside the company to download the Excel spreadsheets that may end up actually incriminating Anthony. In fact, it's cited by the FBI as one of the main pieces of information they used. On top of all this, and honestly, as a interesting part, now we're going to, so those are the facts laid out to you. I don't think there's much... Uh, information that was false in these facts. I think these facts were pretty easily laid out. Uh, now I'm going to get into speculation of what actually happened to Z. So you have to go in the mindset of Z. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got a young child. And now he's caught. And he knows he's caught. Z is smarter than Trevor. He's smarter than Luis. He's much smarter than Darby. He probably realized earlier than these three, because again, that video shows that they're still sitting in a car together, acting as nothing happened. I believe Z immediately he realized faster than these guys, probably when things were actually still okay, that he has to get out. And I believe he might have contacted somebody, and they probably if he if he looked for a lawyer for legal advice, my legal advice would be, yeah, you gotta contact the FBI if you think that he's still in consignment. You must do it. Um, Z left at around the same time as Brian. So Brian left, and then Z was still there, and then and then suddenly he wasn't on camera anymore. He was on camera all the time, and then suddenly it was like he left. I think he probably thought legal counsel. Um, he probably got advice from his dad or his mom or a friend that you need to talk to a lawyer about the situation you are in because it is not feasible for you to continue. I do think Z from his, I mean, you can tell from the numbers, from the watches, from the buying and selling, all this good stuff that he knew, um, he knew more than the rest of them did about actually business and how to make money. So I'm sure that in his calculations, something was not adding up how can they have so few watches? These phone calls are coming in all the time about people having consignment and he's checking the Excel. Just like the FBI agent did. It would be a very simple exercise. He's going to charge, he's going to check the Excel spreadsheet. It, so, it says, oh, the watch has been sold. And then he sees Anthony on the phone telling the consignee who's panicking that the watch has not been sold. You know, you look at the spreadsheet and then you look at what's going on and how many of these consignees are panicking and calling all the time, possibly calling him and asking, hey, can you check the spreadsheet, Z? Did you did they sell my watch? What did they sell it for? And then Z's telling him, oh, it's sold. And he goes to Anthony and says, where's the money? And then Anthony's like, oh, I spent it all. So, um, I, I think in terms of what is going on right now, um, that Z is fully cooperating with the FBI, the IRS, any other agencies that want to. And he's probably a key witness because he was in charge after the Grant Cardone event. He was made, he was promoted, if you will, to, you know, it's kind of interesting, uh, to the business manager and development, right? That was his position at the time. He was going to do less sales and be moved to business management. And he kind of had a leadership role he was actually telling people what to do and stuff like that, which he kind of enjoyed. But unfortunately for him, it was just a wrong company. You know, companies with this type of debt, this type of um, luxury lifestyle, and you know, it absolutely had to end one day. But un unfortunately, you know, and I guess fortunately for him, I can definitely say he left before Darby. He left sometime between Brian and and after Brian. So he left after Brian. But before Darby, before Trevor, and before Luis. Luis was the last one to leave, according to Luis himself. 
So I talked to Luis, and he mentioned that, yes, he kind of stuck on until the end. And I told him that Reddit was, you know, they made this accusation. Is it correct? And he said, yeah, you know, I didn't know what was going on because he was relatively new to the watch market and relatively new to Anthony's business. So he was a little confused as to the, you know, what was, go what was going on. So I think Z is a smart guy. I think Z can operate his own watch business. And he's actually been on... People speculate he's been back to Moda selling watches. He clearly has a passion for watches. He clearly has a business sense. He knows what watches are worth. He knows authentication, at least to a subsurface degree. And he knows what to buy a watch for, what to sell a watch for. He's the Anthony's go-to guy. So I think what happened here was he would have been a valuable piece in the Grand Caliber. He would have been a valuable piece in many, many um watch companies at the time but unfortunately he met anthony he paid anthony a bunch of money and that was the end of z uh, now i'm i'm pretty sure i would have to guess that he is fully cooperating with the investigation because at the end of the day he's got he's not like anthony he he um has a, a kid anthony has a kid but this is like he actually loves you know there's different levels right and he's got a wife and he looks like he would be successful in, in entrepreneurship. And uh, it's one hell of a ride, man. Like, you know, sometimes I felt the business that I was part of in San Francisco was also a scam. There were like parts of me when I was like, wow, this is really weird. They, this dude just gave us, you know, the whole five thing. It's like some drug former. He, he was in prison for a long time. And then he gave us a bunch of money for like penny stocks. And I was like uh what and then we built him a website and honestly we overcharged it we charged him thirty thousand dollars for like a website that probably would cost like five thousand dollars like a, it's a premium website but we charged him 30 so there was a lot of like things that i i was like like yeah you know this doesn't sound right to me uh, and i asked my boss and be like no no this is normal this is normal right and i'm like mm, maybe i should investigate a little bit my myself and then even the irs came down on us and they were looking at our computers and stuff i was like no this is probably not normal now luckily for us we got bailed out uh we got bought and some space astronaut gave us a shit ton of money and and that was the end of that they thought the software was good enough but had it continued maybe i would have been z you know i was young i was younger at the time straight out of law school maybe a year removed from law school and there were situations that were really weird right and and i didn't understand because it's my first kind of real job out law, out of law school and i don't know is that normal for the irs to come to your office and look at like the graphic designers computers i don't know i mean I, I don't know like i don't think so but is it normal for the sec to send you a letter to one of your clients who then was using the client like it was just about penny stocks like the first, and I, we didn't know it was penny stocks, right? We only knew after the letter came. We thought he was just a regular. I thought he was just a regular client, and I was like, "Wow, we're charging him a lot of money for this website. Are you sure that we should be doing this?" I don't know. Anyway, hi guys.